Welcome to this lecture on the breast for block 8. Okay, so first of all, when talking about the breast, we need to understand the intimate relationship between breasts and hormones, whether it's for development and growth of the breast, or whether it's for the actual physiological function of the breast. Um, all of these are intimately related uh, with the hormones. And there are four hormones involved, estrogen, progesterone, prolactin, and oxytocin. Now the main physiological function of the breast is to make breast milk, um, so it shouldn't surprise you that uh, these hormones are heavily involved in that role of helping the breast make breast milk. Uh, with estrogen, uh, under the influence of estrogen the breast will grow, uh, so you're not going to have um, breast development and puberty if you're, uh, uh, if you're female unless you have that estrogen helping uh, with uh, development of the breast. and particularly it causes proliferation of mammary ducts, in other words, uh, it allows a whole bunch of little tubes to develop inside the breast that allow milk to go from deeper tissues out to the nipple. Progesterone is also necessary for development of the breast, um, but in a slightly different way, progesterone develops lobules, and these lobules are full of alveoli, and these alveoli produce all, uh, produce all the breast milk. Now, if we're going to be producing breast milk, we also need um, <coughs> a stimulus for that production, and that uh, that role is played by prolactin. So you can think of progesterone as building little milk factories in the breast, and then prolactin is the almost like the um, the electricity um, that causes the factories to run to generate uh, the breast milk. The last hormone of all is oxytocin, um, which causes contraction of the muscle linings of the uh, mammary ducts, that myoepithelial lining, and because of contraction of these uh, myoepithelial linings, milk uh, can be uh, expelled, and as milk is propelled from the lobule to the nipple. So this is a picture from the classic Gray's Anatomy of 1918. Breast anatomy hasn't really changed in the last hundred years, so this picture is still valid and we have our ducts, we have our lobules that are full of alveoli, so estrogen develops all the ducts and progesterone develops the lobules, and then oxytocin stimulates my epithelial cells in the ducts to expel milk out, and prolactin actually stimulates generation of the milk. As I mentioned, estrogens are largely responsible for breast enlargement at puberty, and there's this interesting side effect, it also causes pigmentation of the areola, which is the area around the nipple. Okay, well, the breast is quite sensitive to these hormones, and these hormones fluctuate quite a bit, or change quite a bit during pregnancy, so we'd expect some breast changes uh, during pregnancy. The placenta generates a lot of estrogen and progesterone, and prolactin is excreted by the pituitary gland, and all of these increase, and so we have estrogen uh, causing the duct proliferation in the breast, causing the breast to swell up, progesterone causes uh, those lobules to grow bigger, uh, and prolactin causes those lobules to be full of milk, and uh, this uh, the interaction between these three causes the breast to enlarge, and that's why pregnancy causes breast enlargement. Uh, and already you have a little bit of milk in those breasts, swelling up the breast a bit um, by the fifth month of pregnancy. But once you deliver the baby, um, there's a sudden increase in the milk production, although it can take but one to three days to hit maximum production. So sometimes a woman will deliver a baby, and the next day she'll say, but I just not have enough milk to feed this baby. You tell them, carry on breastfeeding, chances are by day three. Uh, you'll have it at maximum production and you'll be making more than enough milk. Now, if delivery induces milk production, the question is how does it do that? Well, I did mention the placenta makes estrogen and progesterone, and once it is delivered uh, at delivery, there's a sudden decline in estrogen and progesterone levels in the mother's bloodstream. Um, However, the mother's brain, pituitary gland specifically, is still making prolactin. So you have an increase in prolactin for drop in estrogen. And why is that important? Well, estrogen antagonizes prolactin. It prevents prolactin from working. Um, so in the presence of high estrogen, prolactin cannot fully um, manifest its effect to make increased milk. 
and so once that estrogen drops, prolactin is unopposed, and it can generate as much milk as it likes. And then if the mom is breastfeeding, uh, that suckling uh, st uh, also stimulates prolactin release uh, from the pituitary gland, although uh, oxytocin is also released um, uh, reflexively through suckling, and then the oxytocin can stimulate the myo the epithelial cells so that milk from the lobules that prolactin is suddenly generating can be expelled to them. Okay, and breastfeeding also alters um, the menstrual cycle. Okay, this is a breast physiology um, lecture, but uh, we're going to quickly go over this because uh, just to have a deeper understanding. Once you have suckling, you're going to have that increased prolactin, as I mentioned, and prolactin inhibits gonadotropin-releasing hormone, and that in turn uh, suppresses the uh, release from the pituitary gland of luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. And because of that, uh, we don't have those hormonal effects on the ovaries, uh, so they are not stimulated to ovulate, uh, they are not stimulated to make estrogen, they are not stimulated to make progesterone. That's probably a good idea, because you don't want estrogen uh, in the body uh, when you are breastfeeding, because we know estrogen antagonizes prolactin. Uh, practically, that means that uh, when a, a woman is breastfeeding, her chance of falling pregnant is only about 5 to 10 percent, and it can take up to six months um, before ovulation is properly re-established with uh, each menstrual cycle. So many women actually use breastfeeding as a form of contraception. However, some women can develop Chiari Frommel syndrome, where the brain consists uh, constantly makes more and more prolactin, uh, this even when the breastfeeding is stopped, and you can have galacteria, so there's massive amounts of breast milk from the breast, and because of those uh, effects, um, because of that inhibition on gonadotropin releasing hormone, uh, which ultimately leads to a drop in estrogen and progesterone, a woman can even have genital atrophy. Okay, moving on to men. Men can also get breasts, and that's called gynecomastia. Now, it is already present when, uh, when most male newborns, in about 75% of them, and that's because estrogen does cross the placenta, so there is a bit of estrogen in the male newborn. And it occurs also uh, in a mild form in about 70% of boys at puberty. Exactly why that happens is rather controversial, uh, but suspected to be due to an uh, imbalance uh, in estrogen versus testosterone activity. Uh, men also have estrogen in their bloodstream, and one hypothesis is that um, uh, as the testes develop, they begin producing estrogen slightly earlier than testosterone, and uh, the estrogen is unopposed and starts stimulating breast development um, and that doesn't reverse until testosterone levels build up to a high enough level to reverse that estrogen. might also be related to growth hormone release um, at puberty uh, and that would also explain why there is um, breast development possibly also modulated by the estrogen. But uh, the fact of the matter is no one's quite sure why that happens. And then again occurs in men over 50, and that is also due to the estrogen-testosterone imbalance. Um, as men, men over 50, as their testes uh, atrophy, they can go into something called andropause, which is a, a lowering of the testosterone level. Um, some estrogen still remains in the circulation, but it's no longer opposed by testosterone, and then there's that bit of breast development. So if you have male gynecomastia, we need to figure out why there is male gynecomastia. Is it due to high estrogen levels? Um, well, and then uh, if it is due to high estrogen levels, what can cause it? Well, testicular tumors can cause high estrogen levels. So if you have a patient, male patient, who ha complains about breast development, always consider the possibility of a uh, uh, cancer of the testes. Uh, not only that, but... Um, Adrenocortical cancers or neoplasms can also um, uh, secrete estrogen. Um, some patients are actually exposed to estrogen. Um, so, so 
if you have alterations in your sex hormone binding globulin, um, sometimes if you alter that globulin, um, if there's too much of it, it can bind too much testosterone, and then the um, free component of testosterone is actually less, which allows estrogen to run amok, and that can even happen in liver failure. The liver failure stimulates the rise of the sex hormone binding globulin, and also liver, the liver is needed to break down um, estrogens, and if you have liver failure, then you can have uh, estrogen buildup. Furthermore, you can also have high estrogen levels due to increased aromatase activity. Aromatase converts um, testosterone to estrogen, and that can also be stimulated by liver disease. Um, can be caused by hypothyroidism, uh, testosterone insensitivity, uh, or Klinefelter syndrome, and it can even happen as an effect of obesity. Uh, obese men can have little breasts not just because of fat deposition, um, but because fat is uh, naturally high in aromatase, and that can convert testosterone into estrogen, which can explain why some really huge fat uh, men can be s can act sometimes like little whiny girls, I suppose. Okay, we talked about estrogen, but uh, we can also have a problem with a uh, decrease in testosterone, um, such as Klinefelter syndrome or problems with the testes or removal of the testes, uh, pituitary failure or to secrete luteinizing hormone and uh, follicle stimulating hormone, um, enzyme problems, medication side effects, etc., uh, etc. Et and then we might even have problems with the uh, testosterone estrogen receptors and interestingly enough you might even be um, uh, getting compounds that are not estrogen but can still um, act on that receptor and uh, known um, culprits of this are digoxin so a man taking digoxin might end up having breast development because it does stimulate the estrogen receptor and even phytoestrogens which are apparently uh, found in high concentrations in marijuana, for example, and apparently some heavy marijuana smokers do get some mild breast development. Um, the other possible alternative is that there's an increase in human chorionic gonadotropin, uh, which stimulates um, estrogen production, and in men that's usually due to a tumor. So, if you have a man with gynecomastia, you're going to need to check the human gonadotropin to check for a tumor uh, of the testes or whatever. Uh, you're going to need to check luteinizing hormone uh, to check for pituitary failure. You're going to need to check testosterone um, and estradiol. And all that makes sense um, yeah, if you've been paying attention to the previous slides. And of course, whenever you have a male with um, breast development, those um, human chorionogonadotropin levels or elevated estradiol levels might actually be from a testicular tumor, so you will never go wrong asking for a testicular sonar in the workup of male gynecomastia. Okay, so we've discussed male gynecomastia and we've discussed female breast changes and how it develops, and we see how sensitive uh, breast is to hormones, even to the point where in men um, even uh, knocking out um, a hormone can uh, allow that little bit of estrogen to cause breast development. And it's not surprising then that a lot of breast cancer is actually dependent uh, on hormones and can actually be influenced by hormones. Up to 35% of breast cancers in the premenopausal women are estrogen dependent, that is they need estrogen to grow. So if you decrease the circulating estrogen, you can often reduce the symptoms of cancer and reduce the tumor growth. And this is leads to various treatment modalities for these hormone-sensitive cancers. Uh, you can, for example, consider removing the ovaries, giving estrogen antagonists like tamoxifen, uh, giving aromatase inhibitors to prevent the production of estrogen um, as part of your adjuncts to a treatment of breast cancer. But wait, that's not all. Um, estrogen and progesterone levels change um, during menstruation. Um, so it w uh, it's, uh, obviously it's going to cause breast changes uh, during the menstrual cycle. 
and um, if you look at the estrogen and progesterone levels uh, through the menstrual cycle about 10 days before menstruation um, uh, you're going to have a relatively high level estrogen and progesterone if you looked at combined levels and because of those high combined levels you can have distension of ducts um, you're going to have increase of blood flow t through the breast you're going to have edema on the interstitial breast tissue and this is why just before menstruation some women have um, slightly enlarged breasts and also tender painful breasts and then once those uh, hormone levels drop at menstruation uh, the breast shrinks again and there's relief of symptoms okay so this is just a diagram I made roughly showing how the estrogen and progesterone um, fluctuate uh, during the menstrual cycle we take this as a typical 28 day menstrual cycle with this line representing our midpoint um, the time of ovulation day 28 being the first day of the period um, estrogen builds up until we hit ovulation and then drops a bit and then about 10 days before menstruation there's another little um, slight peak of estro increased estrogen production whereas progesterone only starts rising just before ovulation and then it peaks again roughly about 10 days before menstruation and then because we have this combined elevation of estrogen and progesterone we have increased um, proliferation of ducts in the breast we have increased um, breast uh, lobule um, size in the breast and that is why women can have breast tenderness due to these hormonal effects um, in that sort of time before the, uh, their next period and those are my references